for years then we haven't even copyrighted our material we allow people to copy it to give it away that's what we want i got a chance to actually talk to bill nye and ask him a question and in his question he undermines the very concept of evolution and totally destroys the scientific backing for human evolution evolution destroyed we'll get to that right after this break Before Eric tells us the tale of how Bill Nye destroyed the theory of evolution, let's take a minute to go back to Eric's beginning seminar series to get his prepared, comprehensive overview of this scientific claim in question. There are numerous scientific ways to show how old the Earth is. First one, and I believe it's a great one, the human population. Back in 1999, the human population crossed the 6 billion mark. There are now in more than 6.5 billion people alive on planet Earth. That's a lot of people. But trace the human population backwards and you'll find some interesting information. Back in 1985, there were only 5 billion people on planet Earth. Back in 1800, there were only 1 billion people alive on planet Earth. Interesting. The human population actually makes a curve on a graph. Interesting. And it shows the entire world population started about 4,400 years ago. No, it doesn't at least not on the graph you chose to show. Let's bring that up and expand. Okay, the graph goes back to 500,000 years ago. Were you hoping it would go by too fast for anyone to notice? No, we haven't been here for millions of years. The evidence is clear only a few thousand years, okay? The, so the human population is a great way to show how long we've really been here. Wait, is that it? An assertion and a graph that doesn't support the assertion? Hey, um, speaking of skepticism, because that's the day and age that we live in here, speaking of skepticism, uh, we used a commercial uh, to advertise the Genesis movie that we're doing. Oh yeah, the Genesis 3D movie. That was supposed to be done in March, right? What month is it now? June? That is one of the shots we've been working on, and you know what? I know you guys have been waiting forever for the countdown. Sorry it took so long. So even though we're only maybe a couple of weeks away from having the film finished, um, you know, with the with the cut, we still have a lot of work ahead of us. But, I mean, we're so close, and we will have this film released in theaters very, very soon here. Okay, then. We'll hold our breath for that. The commercial started off with... Uh, Bill Maher talking to Bill Nye. Many of you are familiar, grew up with Bill Nye the science guy. And you and I got to go down to Bill Nye's event in Gainesville, Florida at the University of Florida. A Kiwi named Ray Comfort yes. from New Zealand. Uh, we emailed him about this event and said, hey, there's Bill Nye is going to be speaking. There's a lot of people registered to go hear him speak. Uh, we're thinking about putting together a group to go and evangelize there and talk to people. And so he sent us this wonderful DVD. If by some mercy you haven't seen it, Ray Comfort's Evolution vs. God video, I'm hesitant to say movie or documentary, cringe fest maybe, is now on YouTube, I believe. It's one of Ray's typical severely edited sampling of man-on-the-street interviews where strange reactions to his malformed questions are presented as support for... something. God, presumably? Ray's production company was quite aggressive about flagging anyone using these clips back in the day, so I'll leave it for you to investigate. Or better yet, check the Jacqueline Glenn or Bible Reloaded reviews. And then he uses insane editing to make these people look incredibly stupid, which is something that's just never been done before. I mean, it's just such dishonest editing. I could go out and ask a hundred people a moderately difficult math question and make them all look like complete idiots. So guess what? That doesn't mean that math doesn't work. That's evolution versus God. It's fucking terrible. Ray Comfort doesn't know what he's talking about no. in regard to evolution. He's just like, Bible right, evolution wrong. It's really, he's just slamming his head against a book. Ray sent us several boxes of these DVDs to be able to give out for free to people at the event. And they were, <laughs> they were lining up for a long way. It was a quarter mile line lined up waiting to see. Well, you can check out these video footages and see. This line went for a quarter mile of people waiting to get in to hear Bill Nye speak. So we gave them some free DVDs. I don't think really a lot of them knew exactly what it was that we were giving, though. Some people came up to us and said, hey, is this that thing from Ray Comfort? I said, yeah. They said, no thanks. And uh, so they'd obviously already heard about it. Yes, that would be the natural reaction of anyone who'd heard about it. 
But uh, you managed to actually then get into the talk to hear what Bill Nye had to say. Um, I, I was. I it? had a guy, a friend stood in line. I said, hey, can you go stand in line for the people that don't have tickets? And if there's any leftover tickets, they were going to give them to them. Well, I ran over and jumped in line as I saw that they were starting to go. And I got up and I'm like, oh, it's getting close, Paul. It's getting close. I was about to get in. And the guy looked at me and he had already asked me to move. And he understood that I was there in opposition, uh, the guy in charge of the event. And he had one last ticket in his hand. And I was right there and he went. Ugh. Once again, the appropriate reaction. And I said, oh, come on, man. I'm not going to stir trouble. I just want to go hear Bill Nye. So he handed me the very last ticket. Okay, so in his talk, he talked about how when he was a, a, a young boy, he went with his grandfather to the 1964 World Fair. And in 1964, the human population went from 2 billion to 3 billion. It crossed the 3 billion mark. And he was, said, I would just miss the calculator. They had a, a, a number board running right there showing the human population, and it mm. crossed. He said, well, today there's over 7.1 billion people alive on the planet. And he went along <clears throat> to say, hey, in, in your lifetime, talking to all the students there, in your lifetime, there's going to be, you know, 10, 12 to 15 billion people on the planet. So you guys need to be ready. You guys need to help change the world. And as he went into that, um, I thought, well, that's interesting that he would bring up the human population. And then I thought, I wonder what I would ask if I had the opportunity to ask a question. So I jotted a few notes down on my phone, and after he got done, um, I noticed the guy with the microphone to, to ask questions. The guy with the microphone was standing right over here. I was in the balcony. I thought, you know, I'm just going to follow him. Wherever the mic goes is where they're going to be asking questions. In my head, this is a very Eric Hovind move. Perfectly in character with how I imagine him. So I get up and I stand behind him and I follow him right down to the front of the balcony. And sure enough, I'm first in line in the balcony to ask questions. And so I was the number three person to ask a question. I said, hey, Bill, I got a question for you. Um, well, actually, we got a clip. Are we, are we going to show that clip? Do we have time or not? I, I think we, we don't have time. Don't have time? This is almost the 23 minute mark of a 28 minute show. For my viewers' sanity, I edited out the two of you repeating the same information over and over and stumbling around to pat each other on the back for how Christian and persecuted you are. Check the original show if that's your thing. Honestly, I don't think they ever planned to play the clip. Possibly for copyright concerns, possibly because it doesn't paint Eric as well as he's presenting himself. No, we don't have quite oh, time for that. I, we'll put it on the website. Create, look on my blog at creationtoday.org, okay? The clip of this. So naturally, this page doesn't exist anymore. The Internet Wayback Machine helped me find a copy of the page though at a different address than what was put on screen. I don't know how anyone would have found it at broadcast time. Maybe that's the point. Unsurprisingly, the video embeds aren't working, but the source code did give me Vimeo video IDs, which are set to private, but yada yada yada, got the clip. Well, I am uh, from the Blue Angels hometown, Pensacola, and I came all the way down here to see you. And there are Gator fans in Pensacola. I'm just not one of them, sorry. <laughs> and then let me go on to say, if this were a game show, we would want that to be in the form of a question. <laughs> I said, Bill, today there are over 7 billion people. You said in 1964 there were only 3 billion people. The question is, you said uh, today there's over 7 billion people, 1964, 4 billion, or excuse me, 3 billion people. How far back does the human population go? How far back does that go? Like when you calculate it out. His answer, about 100,000 years. In my grandfather's time, there were fewer than one and a half billion. Right, so how far can you go back with that? If, uh... Uh, you can go back to about 100,000 years. You <laughs> tried in Africa and stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I said, well, I just, I'm having a hard time reconciling. Why is there only 7 billion people on the planet? if mankind evolved three billion, or excuse me, three million years ago. I'm just getting at it. It's, it's uh, from what I've learned about evolution, we evolved, what, three million years ago? And how do, we, how do we reconcile the current population with three million years of humanity being here? Uh, so, that's a very good question for understanding. Uh and your calculation, and, and the calculation obviously that uh, Bill Nye had done, is to do with how fast it takes for the population to double. The more you have, the faster there's more of it. And the, Isaac Newton discovered this and called it the letter E, yeah. the natural water. The technical term for that is exponential growth. Right. So, of course, we're talking about exponential growth from what he claims is 100,000 years ago uh, to today. And uh, that's what we're talking about, but he didn't use that word. And 
we use the term exponential growth. Yeah. So as you have more people, you get more people faster. And his question to you was, are you troubled by evolution? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Are you troubled by evolution? And I was like, what a perfect question to ask. I said, actually, yes, I am. Uh, I do believe that it has some serious scientific problems, yeah. And I went ahead and stayed within the science, because that's what he was dealing with. Yes. And I said, I don't understand if we've been here for three million years, why there isn't exponentially more people than seven billion today. Okay, can you think of one? I think the human population being at 7 billion today instead of exponentially more is just one of them, yeah. And his answer was, I think you need to go back and study mathematics. Sir, I, I really encourage you to take a little time. <laughs> and I went, but you just told me how far back it goes. The math is sound. So at that point, he would throw a few big words out <laughs> that would start to confuse people that not everyone would know. And he also used sort of some condescension and a few things that would get people in the audience laughing and so on. And that's the crux of the matter because yes. he had no <clears throat> argument. So rather than actually produce a rational argument, it was politically better for him to try and get the crowd on side. Is that how it went? He had nothing to say? let's say in East Africa, let's say 30,000 years ago. The millions that you're referring to and the hundred thousands, those are other extraordinary numbers that are quite relevant. But when people started leaving Africa, I think it's closer to 30,000 years ago. The reality, Paul, we know that the human population at 7 billion today is a problem for atheistic evolution, saying that mankind evolved 3 million years ago. Uh, I did a, uh, did a quick search. Answers in Genesis has an article up talking about that, and they say, look, if, if we've been here for just um, a few uh, uh, 50,000 years instead of the, the 4,400 since the time of the flood, yes. we should have 10 to the 100th power number of people on planet Earth. Yes. We, that's 10 with 100 zeros behind it. We don't have that today. Three million years, you would have, wow, exponentially more than that. Okay, let's take a look at the article. Let us start in the beginning with one male and one female. And let us assume that the population doubles every 150 years. Let's just assume that. I don't know anything about population rates. Is that a high rate? Low rate? There's no footnote to tell me this rate is based on historical data or some kind of study or what the ranges are. But okay. It should be noted that this growth rate is actually very conservative. In reality, even with disease, famines, and natural disasters, the world population currently doubles every 40 years or so. I don't know where this is going, so I'm not really sure why there's merit in a rate that is very conservative. I know that general health, medicine, and infant survival rates are as good as they've been in recorded history, or at least better than, say, the Middle Ages. I'm not thinking current doubling rates is a relevant comparator. But even so, 40 years and 150 years are quite different numbers. There's literally no supporting evidence presented why you arbitrarily selected a historical rate almost four times larger than the current rate. We know from the Bible, however, that around 2500 BC, 4,500 years ago, the worldwide flood reduced the world population to eight people. But if we assume that the population doubles every 150 years, we see again that starting with only Noah and his family, in 2500 BC, 4,500 years is more than enough time for the present population to reach 6.5 billion. Oh, I get it now. You chose 150 because you knew what start and end populations you wanted and how long you wanted it to take. Then you solved for the doubling rate that gave you the answer you wanted. Am I wrong? Now, fellow student of creation claims and someone you absolutely should be following, Tony Reed, made the following observation about this proposed rate. 
Giving creationists their earliest estimate for the flood, 2750 BC, Morris's model of population growth gives us less than 30 people on Earth to build the pyramids starting in 2490 BC. Less than 100 people would be there to build the Tower of Babel in 2200 BC. In 1446 BC, the Bible claims Moses was leading 600,000 men on the Exodus, but there could only be 4,000 people in the world at the time. This is not to even address the people living in Egypt, or the cities Babylon, Uruk, Akkad, Kalna, Nineveh, Rehoboth. Boff, Ir, Kala, Resen, and the entire land of Canaan. There just aren't enough people to account for all these places. If we did assume that humans have been around for 50,000 years, and if we were prepared to use the calculations above, there would have been 332 doublings, and the world's population would be a staggering figure, one followed by a hundred zeros. Well, of course, if you pull an exponential factor out of thin air designed to give you an answer in 4,500 years, then it's going to give a ridiculous answer for 50,000 years. This is essentially saying, if I first assume that I'm right, then others are going to be wrong. Helpful. You can go to uh, a population growth calendar. If you want to look one up online, go to population growth calendar. Anyway, I pulled one up, and you can put the starting year. I put the starting year zero, and ending year, I put 4,400 years, since that's how long it's been yes. from you know, the time of the flood. And then I put the, uh, the starting population at eight people, and I had to actually play around with the growth rate percentage to find out what percentage would equal the seven billion that we have today. Okay, so you're just going to admit it. You just found whatever rate that matched the answers you wanted. Yes. And it turns out, on average, since the time of the flood, there's been about a 0.47% growth rate. So uh, not, not very big, not even half a percent growth rate since the time of the flood to get the number of people we have today. Easily doable. Easily doable based on what? You're not even going to take 30 seconds to let us know if this is even approximately in line with observed growth rates? Look, here's a chart of human population growth. I think the first thing you should notice is that the rate is not constant. It goes up and goes down. There's a divot so big around the time of the Black Plague that most charts specifically point it out. But famine, drought, disease, and wars can and have led to periods of population decrease. Heck, if we take the Bible as history, there were millions of post-flood deaths due to war at a time when the population would have barely been millions by Eric's calculations. I must say I find it quite amusing that creationists are so quick to suggest the radiometric decay rates something that observationally has remained unchanged and reliable in the entire time we've studied it, and is essentially unaffected by outside factors. So in other words, the half-life must have changed. Yet their entire argument here is based on assuming a constant population rate going back to the beginning of time, when we can objectively see that population rates change year to year. Is that observational science? Even if population growth rate was somehow constant and matched Eric's derived number, no population grows beyond the availability of necessary resources. Organisms are limited by space, food, and many other factors. A population without enough to eat does not grow. It's relatively recent agriculture, refrigeration, and transport technologies that have allowed humanity to access more than the immediate hunting and gathering available to most of our ancestry. Asking why there aren't trillions of people on the planet is ridiculous. I guess I should let Bill finish his thoughts from before. And I really, as I say to all of to, to everyone who is troubled by evolution. What is it that's troubling you? That it's really not real, or you have some other source of information that you find more trustworthy than what in science we would call the science scientific facts. So just to answer that. Eric didn't get a chance to answer live, but the show's position is pretty clear. Trust in Christ and trust in His Word, our ultimate authority. Believe what you like, but this idea about population is based entirely on stories in the Bible, flagrantly ignoring all of the objective data available. If you're interested in more on this topic, please check the description for links to excellent videos from Tony Reed, as featured, and of course, Classic Logic. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what was that? And even declining in Europe. <clears throat> Populations decline? What heresy is this? Populations don't decline, they only go up smoothly so you can put them on a nice graph. Dummy. Thanks for watching, and a huge thanks to Lois Edwards for lending her voice. You don't know her directly, but she's my primary science checker for most videos, and has saved me many, many times. Before you go, why not subscribe to Apologia to be notified of future videos? Then leave a comment to let me know what you think about the evidence from human population. Do you follow Apologia on Facebook and Twitter? You should. Until next time. Later.